adventure into the pop culture cosmos today, where you'll hear our conversations on different topics within the world of movies, TV, video games, comic books, technology, board gaming, and more. You'll also get a taste of some of our other shows within the cosmos as well. So come on and join us each week as we delve into the pop culture cosmos. Welcome to the pop culture cosmos. Welcome to the first ever episode of Topic Apocalypse, where four, sometimes five, educated and or opinionated individuals gather around this table to discuss random topics for your amusement and ours. I'm joined here by Eddie, Kelly, and Daniel. You can't see their faces because this is not a video. Um, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get us started here with a topic that I was inspired to talk about from, not inspired, more like angered towards talking about on Facebook. So I want to talk about animal cruelty and more specifically people posting animal cruelty videos on Facebook. Do you think that they cause more harm than they do really good? Because this is my thing, the video that, this, more specifically the video I saw was a PETA video of people um, hurting seals like I guess the the seal population grow t- grew too high and they're saying hey it's you know do same thing like we do with coyotes and stuff but they're like hey you can um, go out and kill seals so basically people are going out and killing these seals but there's these videos now popping up of these seals like flailing on the ice and there's blood pouring out of their mouths and stuff because people are killing them but it's like okay you're posting this what is the point like Yes, animal cruelty sucks, and yes, I'm I'm angry. I'm, I'm definitely mad about seeing this video. But what am I going to do about it? Am I going to fly to Alaska to personally stop this? I don't I don't have the funds. And what are you doing about this personally? If you're, you know, if you're going to post something, you tell me what you're doing to stop it. So I think it a lot of it depends on who's coming up with. The videos that you're watching, of course, PETA, I mean, they have an agenda. They're orientated towards driving you to hate anything that hurts an animal, period. I think I watched a video a few months ago, and I, th- I think it maybe there it was pulled. It was about fishing with your children, about how you shouldn't do it because it's it's horrible on the ecosystem, and it, it hurts the fish, and you shouldn't introduce your son or daughter to anything fishing because it's terrible. So I think it, it really depends on who's coming out with that video. PETA, again, is that's their goal is to get you to donate to them, to get you to help them fight against animal cruelty. But I don't think necessarily it's a bad thing. As PETA, they do go overboard sometimes as the perfect example I just gave you. But I think there's so much news that's given to us on a daily basis. There's so much in our Facebook feeds and our news feeds from other social media that I guess sometimes it's good to be reminded of that, probably in not such a graphic way on some of them. Um, but yeah, I think there's just so much information out there and sometimes it is nice to see a video pop back up and kind of remind us, Hey, this is what's going on this in the world. Happened. Like my thing is like where this, this brings me back to like online activism in, in general. Like you have all these people, like I can sit behind a keyboard all day and I can point, you know, I can post videos. I can say like, Hey, that's wrong. That's wrong. That's racist. This is racist. That's, uh, you know, homophobic or whatever you want to call it. But at the end of the day, like, I, I don't want to post something like that unless I'm personally doing something to, to stop it. Like, if I'm donating money to a charity, I'm like, hey, stop uh, stop human trafficking. Donate whatever you can spare. Like, I would do something like that. But at the same, because, on, on, you know, if it weren't something I was donating money to or personally had a stake in, like, I, it, it, I have a hard time, like, stirring the pot, just doing it for the purpose of making people mad, you know? It's almost like you're, they're glorifying it, too. That's all PETA does, though, is fear-mongering. Yeah. They don't actually benefit really anybody. But I think that's yeah. where their big donations come from, is is I think people literally just donate because they think that PETA's going around, you know, making these injustices, you know, brought to our attention. I mean, I don't think any of us are all stupid. I think we all know that they're there. So, I mean, they're they're just bringing it back around, hey... Just to let you know, we already know you know this, but here, here's some more for you. Right, right. So, so it, it's just, yeah. I mean, I, I, I saw that video, and like, I keep, I keep seeing more because I have friends who subscribe to PETA, and they keep posting videos. But it's, um, you know, I, I just wanted to lay that out there and see what you guys thought of that issue. 
I think it depends on the organization. Yeah. I, I think it really does. I mean... I think PETA's mostly um, trying... They try to scare people. They want... Like, they go against... Um, wool here in America where they're saying that, you know, our farmers are herding their sheep, but if anybody wants the sheep to do fine, it's probably the person whose well-being relies on getting money for what they're doing. Yeah. Well, you also look at today's sheep. I mean, most of them aren't... They're, they're engineered to grow wool at that rate. They're bioengineered that way. That's why the way we've, we've set them up. Um, so if we don't, you know, obviously harvest the wool off of them, then it overgrows and it they just wind up suffocating or they can't move and they can't feed themselves. So, but anyways, I don't think it's just about PETA, though. I think there's obviously other organizations that are out there that are doing this. Um, but I think it's just going to continue on and I don't think it will ever change. Yeah, and there there's nothing wrong with raising attention to an issue, but like if you're... Just like a lot of people, especially when it comes to like social media, they'll post things just for reactions. Like well, especially, want, oh, yeah, it's it doesn't matter what it is, it could be about religion, it could be about animals, it doesn't matter. I think people, and a big thing is, I don't think people do research on it. I think they say, oh my gosh, look at PETA or whoever named rec, you know, huge amount of followers. Oh, they they posted this on their Facebook. Well, I'm not going to research it myself, I'm just going to share it and throw it right on my Facebook. and. There I go. I've done my duty for the day. I've raised awareness. We, we are a society of spontaneous knowledge. Anytime something pops up on the internet or news feed or it's trending, people are going to be like, yes, I know everything about this. And they will just plaster your news feed with all of a sudden they've developed this belief in something they don't know anything about. Oh, no, not at all. I, the f- funny thing, I have a friend I went to uh, private school with. And we were, it was a Christian school. We were raised Christian. And he he f- subscribes to this web page that's purely about selling clothes, but they come up with the awfulest memes about crap that doesn't even make sense. They're they're like, oh, and God said this, and I asked him one time because he kept posting it, and one of our uh, high school ministers were on there, and he's he's always you know tagging him in it. Hey, what do you think about this? What what proof is there for this? You know. And it got to the point where I asked them, like, you know, none of the stuff that they're actually posting, they're just memes. They're not true. They're just trying to get you to buy a t-shirt. But that's our mentality now that you see a meme, they're pushing something at, like an agenda on you, yeah. but they want you to buy something. But we see memes, and it's a perfect example. We see memes, and they're automatically true, even yeah. though they're totally never meant to be true at and all. There are like times when people are having arguments online and instead of like responding rationally to it they'll pop a meme up there mm-hmm. and they, they won't even it that's their comeback is a meme or it's like a chicken moving its head or something that one went around the internet forever and just annoyed the crap out of me but a great one's michael jackson eating popcorn yes i'm just here to watch the comments yes exactly so i, I mean i know we and it's, and it's amazing to see how passionate people are behind a keyboard. Yeah. I wonder if, like, you know, sometimes when I see a news article, I, I saw one today I th- we were talking about earlier about the three pit bulls that got out and ate someone's dog, attacked a 52-year-old, and two of them had to be shot. It was amazing the people that were getting on, and I'll open a news article just solely to read the comments about what some of these people will just get on there and say. And you sit there, and it's like the first things out of there was – this lady put a picture of her pit bull and she's like, oh, see, my pit bull's nice. It's, it's just in how you, you know, an owner is. And then the next article under that was somebody posted about pit bulls are the worst breed you can get. So it's amazing to watch people go back and forth and think they're right on, on a social media standpoint. Because in real life, I don't think a lot of us would sit there and argue a point with that in public. Yeah. I think we'd just kind of be like, okay, cool. Yeah, I understand that. Whereas behind a keyboard, we become so much more. And it, the craziest thing is, is we could research this. You could see a meme. In two seconds, you can get on Google or you can get on whatever search engine and start looking for all these references. It's not like you have to go to a library to look for anything. But people won't take the time to do that. They are literally sitting behind some of the best technology that has ever existed, and they will not do research. It's what they believe. It's it's what they feel, yeah. and they'll they'll defend that to the so T. Emotional over it. We literally have the world at. In the palm of our hand. You yeah, know? But sh- yeah, most people Google. carry a computer sh- in their pocket stronger than we use to put a man on the moon. Yeah, exactly. And so we're, we're just not using this stuff because we're too lazy. Like we, this, this is like, I have nothing, like I, obviously we like podcasting, but people, it's gotten to the point where people don't want to read news. They, they would rather listen to it or watch a video. Like, yeah. Quick, like, 
That's why a lot of these, uh, like IGN or Polygon, they make these videos that show quick snippets of what happened in the news that day so people just watch. Then get an entire day's worth of news in less than a minute. Oh, Snapchat. I mean, you could pull up any news station you want. CNN, rifle through. People don't even read the articles. They just watch the Snapchats and up. Or just the headlines even. Exactly. Yeah. See the headline, yeah. Okay, I know what happened today. No. Yeah. Like, we, had, yeah. We, had a, we had a guy at work today. He was one of our customers. And he was getting into the whole, you know, big politic thing. Like, oh, you know, Comey this. And I can't believe he did, you know, Trump would do this. And I'm like, well, why did he get fired? Well, because Trump didn't like him. I'm like, well, what was the specific reason? I'm curious. He had no idea. He just, his mindset was, oh, I saw this small clip. He thought, you know, what his thoughts were. Those were what were important. Those were facts in his eyes. And he just went on. I I could care less either way. I was just curious. Why? Yeah. I don't. I could care less about politics. Republicans, Democrats, they're all the same to me. I mean, so. you know, you get a lot of that on both sides too. Like you have, for one side, for Democrats it, or the, the left, liberal, or whatever you want to call it, it's anytime something is deemed as possibly <coughs> being racist, then there's this, just this whole storm of people with pitchforks ready to burn your house and set your sheep on fire. And then you have on the right side, you have anytime there's like you know back when Obama was in office, they're like. Um, you know, this is going to endanger your right to bear arms, and then it's just a, a whole, you know, storm on that side too. It's just we, but we don't actually research like what's what's going on, like what what is the the fine print on these little uh, these little headlines that keep popping up. We're just going to post it to piss people off. That's just that's what it is. It's, it's clickbait, and it's yeah. I don't think people actually click to read news articles in their news feed on Facebook. I think no. people see the news article. They read the headline and move on. Yep. I think and the that's... brief summary they'll have on there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then it's and then it's all day. It's festering, and it's like, can you believe so and so did this? Well, why did they do it? No, that doesn't matter. They did it. Yeah, yeah. And and more often than not, I think most people are uneducated on that too. They probably didn't even see the headline, so they're, you know, that's like me coming to you. Oh, did you hear about this? I saw this in the news. Your assumption is I watch the whole news, you know, watch the whole news segment. <laughs> right. I have these facts for you. Instead, I'm just going to BS you and tell you what actual my thoughts are. And that's not even, I think that's where we, that's where we've come as an, as a new society is a lot of these news anchors is, is what they believe. It's yeah, not necessarily, yeah. it's, it's a developing story, but all that saying is, is, oh no, we're just there's tossing re- it out there. There's yeah. really no such thing as unbiased news. Like you can't, no. the moment that you say, it's like when people say, hey, I don't see color. The moment that you say, I don't see color, you're you're recognizing that there is it's color. color. You're, <laughs> you're like, the moment you're saying, hey, I'm unbiased about this, you're recognizing your own bias towards it. Yeah, that's why I watch CNN, I'll watch Fox News, I'll watch MSB. I'll watch a bunch of different news article or news outlets. So you get all and I'll just take it. the center of that all and yeah. say, okay, this is where, you know, these are the facts that they're all stating. That, so that's the facts, not opinions. Yeah. Or you just uh, and, it, watch... and it sucks you have to do that. It, yeah. it really does. Or you just watch BBC because they hate all Americans. Yeah. So you get, so you get the real news. Yeah. <laughs> the truth. <laughs> you know, it's, it's getting to that point where, you know, I watch V for Vendetta and you see like state run television. Yeah. And it's like, Eventually, you know, with the way that fake news keeps going around, quote unquote, it, it's going to come a time where, you know, somebody's going to step in and you know what? We need state controlled TV. That way we know for a fact you're getting the real news. Jeez, can you imagine when that like... Well, look at after the election. The, you know, one of the reasons that Hillary, you know, lost, one of the popular theories of many is because of fake news. Yeah. So Facebook came out, what was it, Zuckerberg? And he was like, we're going we're gonna to tackle fake news. Well, how do you tackle it? I mean, they have a hard enough time monitoring their streams for Facebook Live. I mean, look at all people the... People are killing people on Facebook oh, Live. Oh, yeah. People are killing people. And they're people. worried about people fake are, news. I'm sorry. That's... People are raping people, and they yeah. can't control that. But they're going to control fake news. I just don't... It goes back to, like, it's it's all an agenda. You know, PETA has their agenda. Greenpeace has their agenda. It's it's who's pitching their agenda that day, and you see on Facebook. I had to... Anything PETA, I just... I don't even... I, the last video I watched, there was the fishing video where it's, you know, you're... You're a horrible person for taking your son fishing and showing him how to fish. And then another one was, oh, um, car makers using leather. It's it's terrible. Okay, well... Most of it's yeah. synthetic leather. Mo- anyways, most, of it's, most of it's the vegan leather that they're talking about. Anyway, very few car companies, I mean, Lamborghini and so on and so forth, they actually use, you know, skin. 
Um, it's because you're paying for it. But you're paying for it. You're talking about such a small market. It's not like people are going out and buying, you know, multi-million dollar Lambos left and right. So oh, well, you're not. Huh, no, I'm not. No, I just, just the one. Get on my level, man. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. How does the other half live? My bad. Jeez. Come on, one percent. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I think I think social media, as far as you know, over overdoing it. Yeah, I think I think big time. But again, it's it's from the news articles. I mean. But it, I, I was curious to, to say, though, and I think the reason every news organization does this is they keep reminding us because, again, I think cause, because we forget. I mean, today I had my news article. I think there's just so much crap out there that's so horrible that we forget about it. I mean, it popped up, it popped up on my news feed today that, oh, you know, the video of that, the guy that went into the elementary school and killed his wife yeah. with the kids there. I totally forgot it happened just a couple months ago, and that's because there's so much that happens in our our little bubbles that we just can't process it all. I totally forgot that there was a if you want to, it, it was a school shooting, um, but like I totally forgot it happened until it popped back up on my feed. Right. So I think I think sometimes it's good that it does pop up. I'm I don't know about the whole PETA thing because it's not something I'm interested in. Yeah. But I I think that's why they, I think that's why they do it. It's just shock is, value, just to get you to oh, there's blood. Let me look at that. It's just like anything with the you know fights, you know fighting, or even yeah, police brutality, anything like that. It's just to get to grab your attention. Yeah, but it does. It's amazing how fast it disappears. Yeah. I mean, until the next next one happens, then it's well, this just happened a couple well, like months Ebola. ago. Like Ebola. Whatever happened to Ebola? Like all of a sudden, yeah, that's it true. Just like, we're all just better from it. I, it's, and then, it's fear-mongering. That's yeah, all yeah. it is. It's, well, it's the same after any shooting. Then you have the Second Amendment right or, you know, the NRA fighting, everybody you know, in everybody body. and their moms. Literally. Um, oh, no, we need mom. we need stricter gun control. We need this. We need this. And then it slowly disappears. We don't hear about it anymore. That Well, you see, you notice, too, how now that... Obama is not president. Like I guess it depends on where we're, where the country is leaning politically too. Because like we're people aren't reporting as much on like school shootings, Second Amendment issues, stuff like that, freedom of speech, because they're all worried about trash talking the I, the president. And so you get less of. It depends on what the media is interested in. So well, see, it depends that's on what people be, are going to read. Yeah, and people are going to read the stuff that has the most shock, shock value. value. Exactly. Yeah. They want everybody wants. But it, the bad, you know, the bad stuff. They don't want to. Nobody wants to read about, you know, kittens and puppies. Everybody wants to know the dirty. Well, it depends on know. kittens and puppies if they're yeah. vicious. Uh, <laughs> if yeah, if depends on how horrible. The kittens, I'm sure somebody will read it. Somebody made Newton kitties in their basement, and they're going around dun, dun, killing. Dun, dun. But I, a, another good example is look at after the school shootings. You didn't hear mass protests for oh, we need gun, you know, gun control and gun violence. Yeah. What was the difference in that shooting? I mean. Kids lost their life. Um, you know, a human. You know, three. I think it was three, three human pe- beings, and then one was seriously injured. Yeah, it's two. Um, yeah, there was the, the, two the, deaths. But three, one and three the, deaths. The, one of the kids passed away. Uh, I wasn't counting him. I guess. Yeah. Because he. Could well, he doesn't count. I don't think pass, so. You know, he kind of brought it on him. It doesn't count as a but, victim. But where was yeah. the? What was the outrage there? Well, the outrage stopped after it was found that oh, he was an estranged husband. Oh, the school staff let him through the front door. Well, where was the calls There was for... no technical break, broken law until yeah. you start killing people. Well, yeah, yeah. So, well, actually, technically, when you bring a gun onto a campus, that is illegal, but Oh, that's... no. We need stricter because gun-free zone. That it... I just but didn't... Even though it was a gun-free zone... That should have stopped the gun at the door, then. It, exactly. it just doesn't make sense, though. No guns allowed. <clears throat> okay, sorry. Let me take them all out. All right. But where's, where's the, where was the political calls for change on that? There is... Once it was found that, oh, it was the school staff that let them through. Oh, okay. No big deal. But what... Where's the outrage? Well, it didn't suit an agenda, so there was no outrage. You couldn't call uh, for gun control. He's mentally ill. And he's not mm-hmm. access to a gun. Well, he's former military. Oh, okay, well that's okay. We don't. I think Do we're. You know I think we're. Fa- we're afraid of mental Ill. health in this yeah. country. I mean, we just. We don't want. It's, it's hard to address. We just, we just go around making Netflix shows about people who kill themselves, and we're, we we make it. Into that hey, 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 that's your yeah. agenda, sir. Hey, that was hard. <laughs> well, pr- you know, since you brought that up, I find it interesting. So, mental health. Our way is throwing pills at it and, you know, and like for like, you know, San Francisco, you know, they had all these, these parents whose kids had jumped off of a bridge, the Golden Gate Bridge. And it wasn't, you know, oh, hey, I wish there was help for my son. I wish, I wish there was a hospital that he could have went to to seek help and gotten better. It was no, we want funding to build a multi-million dollar suicide net so people can't kill themselves there. Wait, so what did we totally miss? Yeah. We didn't... We're not fixing the problem. We're just trying to... Yeah. 
it's he made a giant trampoline for people. Yeah, that's a, that's, that's realistically I'm a giant trampoline. Oh, I don't, I'd probably hurt. <laughs> But that's our that's our thing with mental social health. That's water. you know that was the call to change. And I mean, social media. Where was social media's upright about it? Like, oh my God, we're. In fact, the only thing I hear on social media is like how great the thirteen reasons why was. That's a horrible thing, by the way. It, like, it, it, it totally like you know, it's actually, absolutely awful, and nobody should actually. So I, who really is thinking about something like that should ever watch it. So I, I brought, oh, it, yeah, it's it's awful. I brought that up at work and. Um, one of our my coworkers was really in the, you know she was like no it was it was a good show being somebody that went through that I think it's totally relatable um, but then I, I just got to that point where I had talked to you about it and I was totally on on point with you that some people that are going through it you know being younger are gonna see that and they're gonna think that's the path you go down yeah I haven't seen it I've just heard about it it's the easiest fastest way it's our our mind like I I think I was telling you this yesterday after after Kurt Cobain died they did a study and it showed that there uh more teenagers were seeking therapy over suicide like suicidal thoughts than than you know ever before like there's a a spike because it's being thrown out into the news as, as the media was completely oversaturated with it and no one had ever talked to them about these issues before so that you, you're making this show and you're, it's basically targeted to teenagers saying like, you know, hey, we're doing this to raise suicide awareness. No, you're not. You're doing this to, to entertain people. Like you're turning a serious mental health issue into a, a, a show basically to entertain, to make money. The guy that wrote the book, he based it off someone else's alleged experiences. Like he had never experienced this himself. So like. When I was in high school, I was severely depressed. I, I made the rounds through therapy. I, t- I tried the medications. But at, I, at the end of the day, like, I wouldn't want someone to come up to me and say, hey, so I watched this Netflix show and it taught me empathy. So I want to know if you're okay. Like, I wouldn't want that. Like, and their empathy is going to end the moment that the credits roll in that show and they go back to watching Gilmore Girls or Full House. They're going to completely forget about what they watch. So it's like... But the people who aren't going to forget about it are, are the, the kids that are, who, <coughs> who are struggling that with experience that. It. But yeah. watching that's, this. But that's, that's our way of dealing with mental health. Well, let's make a satire out of it. Yeah. And what of the what of the people who uh, who identify with Hannah Baker, like with with what she's doing, what she went through, they're going to be like, oh, well, the inevitable conclusion here is I need to kill myself. So it's like... Nothing's going to... It's, it's not going to fix itself. I can't fix it, so I'm going to end it now. It's super well, dangerous mentality. Well, and that goes, back, that, that goes back to social media. I mean, if a lot of this... A lot of dealing with mental health mm-hmm. is on social media is, you know, finding a group you can relate with and, and so on and so forth. But then you find nasty bits of social media, too, and it's almost as bad as being, you know, some of these kids are at high school junior high and they're getting bullied or whatever they may be Mm -hmm. and that's why they're dealing with the issues they're dealing with as far as suicide and then you go on social media and it can be just as bad yeah i mean some of the stuff that comes up it's it's super depressing and there's like there's times where (laughs) i've talked to kelly and i said you know i i love our son very much and you know i'm glad he's a part of our life but like sometimes this world is just so crazy yeah what kind of person was i what was i when i brought my son into this world to you know, be here. Right. Um, and it's it's sad to say that as a parent. I the mean, thing is, is you shouldn't raise your kids to stand, you know, to withstand the darkness. You should raise them to be better than what, what it but is some, now. It's not about... Right. But some know. kids do have those mental health issues where they can't, they, they can't just be independent, they, you know, strong-willed, especially when you're in, you know, an adolescent and you're just learning about the world and you're trying to figure it out and you have these people that come along and put you down. I mean, I wonder no, how I'm many. No, that, no, I know, but I wonder. Is, is... I wonder how many people have gone up to like their parents or their friends, and you know, I'm really down, and I've been thinking about suicide, and it's you know, as a parent, mostly. I wonder how most of these parents just say, "Oh, come on, you're just," or they talk to go to therapy, or like they don't actually want to deal with the problem. Deal with it. Be they, be they don't actually be a parent. They want to push them off on somebody else. But yeah, because I think as parents, we all think that you know our kids are perfect. Yeah, and. They're going to be okay. You know, I was okay when I was a kid, so he'll be okay. And I think I think that's just our way of sidestepping it. Oh, hey, mom. And, you know, and, and kids are getting social media accounts at younger ages. I right. mean, 8, 9, 10 years old, you shouldn't be on social media yeah, at right, that right. account. And and that's where it starts. That's where, look at all the violence you're seeing from PETA. Well, now these kids are going to grow up to be like, oh, my gosh, 
We can't ever hurt an animal. We can't. I, I watched a video of this like three year old saying, Mommy, I don't want to eat chicken anymore because it hurts the chickens. I don't want to eat eggs anymore because it hurts the eggs. You need that. Yeah, you're, well, you're going to you be. You're, you're, I, don't wanna, you know, I don't want to eat a plant because, yeah. you know, the poor plant's going to be well, screaming when I cut it up. Because uh, Peter did that whole autism dairy thing. They did, mm. did you see that? I, I heard about it. I didn't actually and like. It, it comes down to causation versus correlation. You can make statistics say pretty much anything you want. Right. There is everybody, let's see, listening to Justin Bieber music will make you younger because statistically speaking, younger people listen to Justin Bieber. Sweet. No, no, no. <laughs> no. The fountain of use. Time to start downloading some more beeps. I believe. I mean, some but so beeps. That's correlation versus causation. Those are two things that are connected, but they don't really have anything to do with each other. Right. So yeah, pe- more people were getting diagnosed with autism and people, or people that drank milk got diagnosed with autism. Well, people that drink water got diagnosed with autism. Does water cause autism? No. That, that, that's an interesting point. That's like, you know, if you, if you were to say, hey, the sky is green and you kept saying it enough times, you got enough people to say it, eventually people are going to be like, mm, maybe blue is just another shade of green. Yeah, exactly, yeah, it's a different shade of green. Yeah. It's just... And people don't actually think anything past that because, like you guys were saying, everybody just wants like the most basic information they can get, right. and that's where they're gonna go with. Right. But it's not. Yeah. It's not accurate, and it's it, the people that suffer are the ones that need the help. Mm-hmm. You know, because now everybody's more concerned about going vegan than helping that you know helping the people that are actually suffering from autism because you know milk's bad, so we're gonna go after the dairy farmers and everybody should be vegan because. Because it, it hurts the chicken. Right. It, it's, it does, it's well, ridiculous. It's, it's the same as yeah. when PETA shows, like, you know, a, a dairy farm where they're, you know, beating up the cows and oh. you shouldn't drink dairy. And, like, and, it, and it makes you stop and think. It's like, okay, well. What about the poor almonds? Yeah. What, <laughs> the, the trees, <laughs> the man. The soy. But, <laughs> but, what you're not, but what you're not seeing is, okay, well, that's not every dairy farm. Yeah. I mean, you're if trying was... you're trying to get us to make an assumption. Okay, if you want to tell us which farm it was. I'll make sure that my milk doesn't come from there until they clean up there. That's fine. But don't go around trying to change an entire population to fit your agenda. Yeah. Because think about it. If we all did what PETA told us to do and we stopped doing all their... Where would they be? What would they... would What, what would they would, have what to... Would they yeah, be doing? They, what would they be doing at that point? Because, well, there's no longer an agenda to push. Look, PETA, PETA's now non-existent. Well, what comes along next? The opposite of PETA? Do they, or does PETA become, you know... Hey, we're gonna be anti PETA. No, you need to eat pets and <laughs> an organization yeah. that tells you you need to eat animals. You go in you the backyard. Do, you sorry, go in the backyard can. and eat your pet <laughs> cow. Their, their fear mongering videos would just be a bunch of like sheep frolicking across a hill. <laughs> the same is like you know, look at Greenpeace. You see these? I saw these videos of these guys climbing Russian oil um, derricks out in the Arctic, and I'm just sitting there. I'm like. Yeah, but these are the same, probably the same guys that are pumping gas into their car to drive around. Right. Greenpeace had a very weird article up. Uh, this, this is a couple, few years back. Um, they said that when your pet dies, you need to eat it because it's better for the atmosphere than if you were to bury it in the backyard and let its its decaying uh, body release. That's that's nonsense because where we buried our cat in the front yard a couple months ago, there is some great grass growing. Over there. <laughs> that's nonsense. I can tell you right now. And the Amazon box I put it in is degradable, so it's gonna go right back into the earth. Caring about the environment. That's right. I don't know about those inflatable like plastic things they keep you know to keep your stuff from getting broken i put that in with her like it's a pillow so i don't know if that'll that's degrade. not that's not biodegradable <laughs> so that'll be in the lawn yeah you know somebody that'll come up but i find that nonsense yes if you're tired of sifting through flea markets for rare and unique games we can help retro city games in henderson nevada only five minutes from the las vegas strip has all your favorite gaming staples classics and a wide selection of rare games with new stuff always appearing on our shelves Come in and chat with Nicole or Doug about your love of games and watch as they help you complete your collection or find your childhood favorite. And don't forget, Retro City Games loves trade-ins. So if you have any Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega, Xbox, PlayStation, or even PC games, come in and visit Retro City Games today. Welcome to the new metropolis of gaming, Retro City Games. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Catch us on YouTube, Facebook, Humanican Media. Um, Sorry we wasted your night. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yes, sorry we wasted your night with some very educational information, alright? 
Yeah. Vaccinate uh, kids. And opinionated too. Vaccinations yeah. and baby seal killing. It's just all kinds of good stuff. All right. Later. Thank <laughs> you.